West Wind Clear is the fourth volume in VM Knox's series of stories about her hero, the Reverend Clement Wisdom, wartime Church of England priest and officer in covert operations. This story sees him in Southeast Asia, in Australia and Singapore. And um, it concerns uh, his leadership of a guerrilla force, their mission to secure a vitally important person in Singapore and take him and the secret he carries back to Australia. Here's a snippet. Singapore, 21st of December, 1941. Clement felt the hollow in the pit of his stomach. He stared at the empty beach, willing Tom and Joe to appear out of the night. In the stillness, and from somewhere behind him, further up the hill, Clement heard a muffled moan. He stopped, his senses on high alert, his body completely still. He questioned if the noise was an animal of some kind. Crouching down, he crawled slowly up the hillside. About three yards in front of him, and surrounded by dense foliage, he could see someone on the ground in a small clearing. He knew immediately it wasn't Tom or Joe, neither did he believe it to be Johnny. The person appeared to be huddled on the ground, with their knees bent and feet tucked under them, as though cowering in fear. Clement silently lifted the binoculars and focused them on the crouched figure. The head was bent to one side, yet held high as though in a trance, and he could hear the low moaning of repetitive, agonised breathing. He knew that sound, the shallow, thready breathing of a person in great pain in the final stages of life. It was a sound he recalled from his time in the trenches during the Great War. He steadied the binoculars again. The face was that of a woman. Lowering the binoculars, he edged forward over the damp ground, his hand gripping his knife. From the periphery of the small clearing, he could see she was bound, almost trussed like a bird ready for roasting. A rope extended up her back, beginning from under her body, then wound around her hands and drawn up around her neck. The rope was tight, her head drawn back and high, so that should it fall forward from exhaustion or unconsciousness, she would die from strangulation. Her mouth was wedged open with a gag. Inching forward, Clement checked the area. Rolling on his back, his eyes searched for booby traps or trip wires in the branches above his head. He was within a yard now, the dense foliage still concealing him. He rolled over and heard the woman draw in a raspy breath. She slowly opened her eyes. He inched closer again, still crawling on his belly towards her. He scanned the immediate area around her before crouching down beside her. Then he cut the rope, securing her neck, hands and legs. She fell sideways, one hand reaching for the gag in her mouth, ripping it out. Then she lay on the ground, breathing hard, her body still coiled in numbness and pain. Slowly, she lifted her head and stretched out her legs. Minutes later, she looked up at him, gasping air, her hand grasping the deep red, excoriated flesh across her neck, where the rope had gouged her throat. "'Dear Lord, can you stand?' Clement asked, his ears alert for any noise or presence in the surrounding jungle. "'Give me a minute,' she whispered, her voice hoarse. Keeping his gaze on the surrounding area, Clement reached down and lifted her to her feet. Still supporting her, he reached into his webbing and passed her a flask of water. She swallowed several times before speaking. "'Are you the vicar?' she whispered, still holding her neck. I am. Thank heavens. The Japanese have taken Captain Winthorpe. They're looking for you. We should leave quickly. How many of them? Clement said, pocketing his flask. Bending, he picked up the cut ropes and shoved them into his pocket. It's a small special force, I think. Three brought me here, but there could be some on the beach. They were expecting you. Is Captain Winthorpe dead? I don't know, but I don't think so. I think they're holding him in Labrador Battery. It's a bit further along the coast and higher up the hill. And you are... Evelyn Howard. I was with Captain Winthorpe. Clement heard the rustling of leaves behind them. He turned, his knife in his grip. Tom appeared in front of him. Clement could see blood on his shirt. Tom eyed the woman before speaking. We've got company, Clem. 
and there are searchlights a bit further along, coursing over the beach and sea. They got silenced weapons they fired on us as we beached. Joe and me rolled into the waves and swam underwater further down the beach. Did you see Mick? Yeah, Mick called to me, so I knew where he was. Is Joe with him now? Yeah. Are the boats well hidden? Tom nodded. But mine is riddled with bullet holes. He won't be going anywhere. One boat damaged, left two for the return trip, and Clement knew he couldn't leave the woman behind. They would manage somehow. Clement peered into the darkness. Through the vines and bushes, he could see the flickering lights of torches coursing the beach. And he could hear voices. Hi, thanks for watching. We hope you're enjoying our interviews and book readings. And if you are, leave us a comment. Tell us what your favourite book genres are. Hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out when we post new content.